Hello everyone, welcome to the GOE Collegist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on various topics of geography, environment and research methodology on my channel, the GOE Collegist. So if you are new to this channel, consider subscribing our channel because we are going to cover each and every topic related to geography on our channel. Now in today's session on settlement geography, we are going to learn about a very interesting topic called the sphere of urban influence. So what is this urban influence all about? What is the concept of city? region, the concept of Amland, its various types and the viewpoints of various scholars who gave certain theories to express the concept of this urban or zone of influence. In today's session, we are going to learn about this all. But before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and do share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss this concept of the sphere of urban influence. The word here is influence. It means the impact over the surroundings. Which impact? That is the urban impact, right? So the urban sphere of influence, what we say is the geographical region which surrounds a city and maintains inflow outflow relationship with the city. It means the city region, which is urban area has an impact of a certain kind on its surrounding region which is in relation to inflow and outflow of the goods and people services now this region is known as the urban influence region or the sphere of urban influence in simple way now let's learn about the term sphere of influence area which was first used by the scholars Nodem and Cantor now these people for the first time talked about these kind of influences. Later, the term umland was used by the geographers of Scandinavian countries and Western Europe and Germans, right? So the sphere of influence have been called as umland in the Western European geographical fraternity as well. And the term city region was given by Dickinson when he was trying to elaborate the concept of the influence of urban areas on its surrounding region. Right? So now what we observe here is that larger settlements and conurbations have a larger sphere of influence than the smaller ones. It means what? It means that they attract people from a wider area because of the facilities they offer. It means if it is a big city, it will have bigger influence, right? It means it will attract people from all around the places, not just a small area. While if it is a small village or a small town, it will not attract people from far off places because of the facilities. So facilities increase, diversity of the economy increases as we move up the ladder. So if you observe this kind of diagram, you can draw any kind of diagram. But a symbolic diagram is that if this is a settlement A which has a larger area of influence, while B has a smaller and C has further smaller. Right. So it all depends upon the degree of urbanization that is there in that particular settlements. It means if we go up the ladder, if we go up in the pyramid, if you remember hierarchy of urban settlements, we learned about this. So upper strata settlements have bigger influence. So for example, we can understand that people coming to Mumbai or people coming to Delhi, these are the biggest cities in India. So it has a larger countrywide influence. People from all walks of life come to these cities for several opportunities and work. But if you take another city example of the second tier or third tier cities like Patna, Banaras, Prayagraj and several others, what you observe? Not, they have not that big kind of catchment area. People are not traveling to these places from across the country, right? So what you observe, that sphere of influence varies with this particular degree of urbanization and also the largerness or in terms of the population size and services. If the settlement is large, it means it will attract furthermore population from all across and it will have a larger extent in terms of influence. Right. So what you observe further, every city performs certain functions, maybe administrative functions or maybe educational functions, health functions and several other functions in terms of services you can understand. Right. And it provides services to the people which is around the city itself, within the city itself and also people from outside the city. Right. That's what we say is the influence area in terms of functions. For example, food grains, milk, vegetables, fruits, labor, raw material, etc. All these things are very important. 
right and in turn city provides these functions like education recreation transport facilities technology entertainment all these facilities are provided in turn with these things so there is an inflow of these raw materials to the city these useful materials to people of the city while city provides education and other functions in return of these particular facilities so this is an inflow outflow network and further we can understand through this diagram also if you observe city a and b this is an overlap area where services of a and b both are available so this is also called zone of competition this is the sphere of urban influence right so this is what we say and there are certain areas which are also left out which are not given services by any of these cities so what we observe, the geography greats like Professor R.L. Singh had postulated that a town does not exist in isolation, rather it is dependent on its maintenance of the vast area surrounding it. And also Griffith Taylor believes that there exists a socio-economic relationship between the city and its contiguous area. Right? So this socio-economic relationship is very important for making it influential. Right. So what you observe here, the sphere of urban influence has several words or terms we can say to elaborate it. Many times people use interchangeably these words, zone of influence, umland, city region, catchment area, urban hinterland, urban area, tributary area, nodal region, trade area, sphere of urban influence, holon, commuting zone, commuter zone. Several terms have been given in order to understand this inflow outflow network with the city, the core urban area. Right. So what you observe for ports, similar regions were called hinterland and later on this hinterland was used interchangeably with umland also or in simple way the zone or sphere of influence also. Right. So what you observe here, a city region or sphere of urban influence or we say umland has the same meaning and their delimitation when we say this is their area, delimiting that area or defining that area is based on range of goods and services that is the demand and supply inflow outflow networks right so what you observe here umland that is a german word which means basically what the surrounding land surrounding to what the urban area so the term was first used by daniel saunders in 1883 but remember it was highlighted and popularized by andre alex right he was a french geographer about 1914 if you observe and urbanization was picking up so according to gilbert the term umland has been derived from swedish word that is omland which means all sides or you can say surrounding area right so what you observe there are definitions given by many scholars Whittle C 37 Griffith Taylor 49 R.L. Singh 1955 and Gopala Krishnan 1970 so look at these definitions umland is the intermediate tributary area extending on all sides of city then you observe Taylor's definition of the town is that proportion of surrounding country which is linked culturally then R.L. Singh gives a definition that is intermediate rural land surrounding the town or metropolitan region and then umland is a contiguous tract which was given by this Gopal Krishnan. So we observe that these are several definitions which you can understand in whichever way you want to as per your convenience. So now what you observe is what are the types or we can say what are the types of umland or sphere of influence. So umland can be classified on the basis of the effectiveness of services right and intensity of the financial relationship. Remember the two phrases right these two things are very important in order to define or we can say classify the umland or sphere of influence. So what do you observe? The first is called primary umland. The word itself is primary. The first one, the region is close to the city and offers effective services, right? Which is closer to the city will receive effective services of the city region, right? And then there is a secondary umland. It means it is the delimitation of secondary umland, which is important in terms of services that go extending, right? Bus services, food grain supplies, wholesale services, higher education and several other services. So what you observe here in the secondary umland, transport system is very important. It's very highly developed because the connectivity matters from the core of urban area to the umland. So students living in this move towards the center for education and they come back during holidays. If you observe around your own cities, what do people do who are having education in some city college? They go for education and they come back. So this tofro, inflow, outflow network is what is very much important in terms of influential zone. For example, we take the case of University of Delhi. 
so people from different parts of india come to university of delhi and study here right so this is the influence of delhi university and it is an urban function educational function right that's where delhi becomes more influential so wholesale markets trader communities banking services administrative and medical services these are certain services which calls for making the secondary amland right one city service that is metropolitan services of delhi within delhi itself delhi region and other services that extend outward both of them make the complete amland so we have primary and secondary amland right then the limitation of these amland how do we define the area right how do we discuss that this is going to be the limit of the sphere of influence so there are different methods to study it right so development of fast transport and communication systems have influenced this particular definition and delimitation as well now because distances have become shorter because of advancement in technology messages can be communicated easily through internet right so what has gone now the definitions have changed from the earlier and the situations have changed so urban sphere of influence can be determined by two methods methods especially in geography we always talk about qualitative methods and quantitative methods one is on the basis of observation and qualitative techniques and the other is on the basis of statistical techniques mathematical techniques and several others so what do you observe qualitative and quantitative services and functions while other is statistical analysis based so let's learn one at a time so qualitative techniques or we can say service and function based approach so who were the great scholars who talked about it let's look into this inflow and outflow of commodities that is to fro from the city these particular functions so what do you observe r e dickinson 1930 he talked about trade cultural relations and other movements of people and try to delimit the amland that is city region concept then you say cd harris in 1940s he worked on the salt lake city and he took into consideration what on the basis of observation the data of 12 essential services and then he delimited that this is the boundary of amland cities where these 12 services exist what kind of services look here retail trade wholesale trade religious influence newspaper circulation radio broadcast and several others that you can read here right so this is one way to look into it then what you observe in indian context the great professor r l singh of banaras hindu university was the first person first geographer who studied amland of any city in india and the city is varanasi in 1951 right so what you observe he classified two sets of criteria for varanasi the first was inflow variables the variables of services coming in wards from outside to the city so vegetable supply milk supply grain supply and several others and then the supply base that is outflow variables which are services given by the city right so bus service newspaper administration and several others and not to forget the educational services of bhu itself right then what you observe vls prakasha rao did a study of karnataka and mysore in 1964 and he also take took the basis of the three indices wholesale trade retail trade and bus service to delimit the amland now what you see in these approaches services are the main part that in terms of that service extension or till which point the service extends that is the boundary that is what the amland region has been defined now if you observe ab mukherjee he also talked about the modi nagar in 2001 economic service area social service area cultural service area then comes the quantitative method on the basis of statistical methods in geography and remember statistical methods in geography have been very important tool for most of the research scholars so what did they do they took the advantage of statistics and brought them to geography in order to do analysis and in which the first model the most important and widely used model was gravity model or we say international model or many times the factor distance decay analysis the services that decay with distance from the town or urban area has been taken into consideration by many scholars and one of the prime areas of research for wj relly was law of retail gravitation applied to what you say is society urban areas so what did he do he classified in 1931 these particular things that is retail trade population distance between two nearest centers he took these variables and try to map the urban amland or we say the sphere of influence so what do you observe he gave this particular formula and if you observe this s1 by s2 that is p1 by p2 into d1 by d2 whole square so what is this formula all about let's look into it so s1 and s2 are volume of retail trade goods these ones right 
then what is available is P1 and P2, where P1 is the larger center, P2 is the smaller center. So there is a large center, there is a small center, and there is a distance between them. So what we observe, there is an intermediate center if it is there in the between. So from here, this distance and this distance on both sides, right? So this is what was taken and this theory is basically coming from gravity model. So you have the same G M1 M2 by R square where R is distance, right? And M1 M2 is the mass of one and mass of other. Here mass is population of one and population of two. Right? So this kind of models were taken in geographical analysis and further Knowles and Betting in 1976 advanced this model and presented it like in this particular way. So you have a settlement which is settlement K and then population size is 1000 located at distance of 12 km from city I and 6 km from city J which you can observe here. Now population of I is 40,000, population of J is 5,000 and this is the intermediate center. This distance is 12 km, this distance is 6 km. So what do we get here? By using these formula and methods, we observe that in case of this ratio being 2 is to 1, it means that two people move from K to I, from here to here, two people move and from here to here, one people move. So this is movement of people through statistical techniques and gravity model. Now, if you observe further, breakpoint theory was given by Canvers, P.D. Canvers, and he talked about the improvement upon retail gravitation theory and saying that breakpoint theory was very important. It talks about the breakpoints in between the movements of people, right? So the movement between two cities will depend upon population size of both cities and the distance factor between them, right? So here is one important thing that if two cities are 14.5 kilometers apart with individual populations, then how we are going to find the breakpoint? So he gave a formula and the formula is this particular formula if you can observe here. And he said the breakpoint calculation will be done that this is the point till which people are willing to travel for this city and for this city. So for this particular city, people are not willing to travel far distance, but for this bigger city, people come from far off places. That is what we understand in simplification. Now let's understand the degree of urban influence model given by VLS Prakash Rao. He gives this particular formula for Amland of Karnataka to delimit it. So what do you see? Degree of urban influence, that is D has been calculated with the use of area, population or state of region, T is population of town and R is radius of the circle. When we say the influence area, so if this is the center, what is the radius? Calculation of this radius R, right? So these kind of formula was used and further, there was another gravity model in Indian context used by MMP Sena, equal gravity model in 1988. The whole point is to delimit that services of the city extends till which maximum point. So that particular region between that particular zone will be called zone of influence or sphere of urban influence or the umland or the city region that we need to understand here. So now when we have discussed in details about the various concepts and theories related to the sphere of urban influence, in the sessions to come, we'll be talking more on different other concepts like conurbations, megalopolis and several other topics on our channel The Geoecologist. So do subscribe, do share the videos and take care.